Hello and welcome to chapter 13, Statement of Cash Flow. People, this is an exciting chapter because it is answering the question, where did the money go? And people, uh, investors want to know, where did you put my money? Uh, they want to say, hey, this is the money that I gave you to invest. What did you do with it? Uh, this is something that potential investors are going to be looking at. This is something that internal managers are going to be using. Because if you're not using the money well, should they stick it out another year? Potential suppliers, current suppliers, uh, will I get paid? Uh, and even customers. If, for example, they're choosing between your company and another company, uh, they might say, hey, who's in the better financial health? to stick around so that uh, this is who I want to work with and build a longer term relationship with. Because if you are a customer and you develop these relationships, you integrate uh, your business processes with the company, and then they go under, that is they go out of business, that is a pain in the butt uh, to say the least and likely has some financial repercussions uh, as well as some operational issues for you as a customer. So uh, this chapter answers, where did the money go? We have three, four, four learning objectives, but um, this is going to be done a little bit differently. Uh, in the past, we have done um, one video for each learning objective. However, um, you will see that we will do one video, this one, on describing the content and format of the statement of cash flow, essentially answering what is the statement, how do we use it, um, what do we expect. And then um, because there are so many similarities between the next three and, um, and just the way that it's organized, you will see we are going to talk about each of the three sections that we will do a brief overview in Learning Objective 1 and effectively Learning Objective 2, 3, and 4 we will cover in the next video. So that is looking at each one of the three types of sections of the statement of cash flow, operating, investing, and financing in the next video. So without further ado, let's look at the end goal. This is our cash flow statement. This is what we will be preparing. This is what I saw, you know, when I was an undergrad, people in uh, intermediate accounting crying over because again, people, uh, these statements will come back in future accounting classes should you decide to uh, continue on. Now, I know that doesn't sound like an endorsement, but I will say um, they were crying because they knew they couldn't get it to balance. They're like, ah, and that is the frustrating thing. And this is the thing that I remember, you know, uh, when I was preparing some financial statements and I was just couldn't get that last part. I couldn't get it to balance. And I was looking at it for like three, four, five hours, preparing it, reviewing it, redoing things. And then I went and I got a coffee and I remember standing in line being like, oh, there's that non-cash add-in. And then I came back and it balanced. So it is one of those things that when you have it right, you can self-assess and balance and like know that you got the 100% on the exam. But when you have it wrong, it is that thing that is nagging at you at the back of your mind. So um, this is the end goal. Let's look at operating. What is the cash that we used or generated during our operating activities? Uh, investing. Where did we invest our money? What big pieces of land or equipment or tractors are we using? And then financing. How do we finance our investing and hopefully not operations because we want to finance big pieces of capital items uh, in order to generate cash from operating activities. So did we use debt? Did we use equity? Did we use a mix of both? And so what ideally we would see in a healthy company is we would see a positive cash flow from operating activities because that means that, hey, uh, during this past year or period, uh, we actually made some money off of the thing that we said we were going to make money on. You know, traditionally in a regular company, uh, tech startups, you know, that's that's likely going to be different, uh, etc. Uh, investing, okay, um, this would likely be negative because we want to be showing that we're continuing to invest either our cash flow from operations and or our cash flow from financing activities. And um, how are we spending that money? How are we using the money to invest now and such that 
in the future, our operating activity cash flow is even bigger. So, you know, are we investing in a new um, manufacturing facility? This is where that cash will tell us where we're putting those kind of things. So we can look, and if we see, oh, look, um, your operating activities is positive, your investing activity is positive, meaning maybe you sold a manufacturing company, um, manufacturing uh, space, well, what's your future operations gonna look like? So it's interesting. It's not all a positive, all good news. It's really, what is the story of this business? What did they do last year? What did they do prior years? Uh, and putting the story together so that you can say, do I still want to be with this company? Do I still want to work for this company? Do I still want to invest in this company? And where is this company likely to go in the future? Financing, uh, debt, equity, mix of both. Uh, and one is not better than the other. As we discussed in previous chapters, uh, debt is tax deductible. Ta uh, debt doesn't call you any. Debt uh, just cares that are you paying it back its interest rate and are you eventually going to pay them back? Uh, whereas equity, that's your shareholders. Those are the people that are like, what are you doing with your money? Uh, they are a more costly uh, source of, um, of financing. However, they are in it with you. So if you don't make money, they don't make money. Uh, but if you make money, they don't make money. So they can be your uh, hard, hardest critic, harshest critic, or your biggest champion. Then um, here we will add up all of these cash from operations, investing and financing. Again, all of these can be positive or negative. And then we see what's the net. We take our opening cash. So from the balance sheet, and then it should equal our ending cash. So that's what I mean. It's self-balancing, not self-balancing. You're going to balance it or the accountant's going to balance it. And you know it works when it balances. When opening cash plus changes, net changes, equals ending cash for the period. All right. Uh, we also put a little note on here that talks about significant non-cash investing. Uh, and financing. So for example, if you trade a table for a tractor, uh, you know, you'd want to talk about, hey, cool, we did this invest, this non-cash investing. Um, or somebody donate, one of your investors was like, hey, listen, I want a bunch of shares um, and I'm willing to give you this piece of land. You would note it here because that was a non-cash um, investment and that was relatively uh, significant likely. All right, so let's move on and let's talk about this a little bit more in depth, knowing what our goal is. Uh, I will also say that my finance people in the audience, uh, this is uh, apparently what your finance gurus say is the most important statement. Recall, we have our balance sheet statement, we have our income statement, we have our um, equity, uh, a statement of changes of equity statement, and our fourth statement, which is our cash flow statement. Where did the cash go? How are we generating cash? Cash is the lifeblood of the company. Without cash, um, you are not solvent and you cannot go and generate uh, revenues. So, or at least you can for a little bit, but you'll limp, limp out and you'll eventually die without cash. So, uh, cash flow statement, it's important. Dialing back a little bit, the purpose of the statement of cash flow is really to assess a company's ability to generate cash. Are they likely to, given what you know about them, generate cash in the future? And it also answers the backward looking statement. Well, cool. What did they do with the cash um, last year, last period? So in accounting, yes, we do look backwards, but we do so with the intent to generate hypothesis uh, as far as where the company is likely to go in the future. Uh, the cash flow statement also lets us look at and compare one or two or three companies or multiple more um, within the same um, field. And so we can say, okay, great, we have two companies that are relatively have the same income, they have the same um, you know, net assets on the balance sheet, but how are they using their cash? And so you'd want the more efficient company because then um, it will give an indication as to how they will be doing business in the future. 
uh, about that, making comparisons with other companies. That is something that we will be looking at in chapter 14 when looking at ratios. So we, this chapter and the next chapter are really helpful because they're going to be allowing us to look at what are the best investments to make. And when we're in the company, you know, how is the company that we're in currently, how are we doing and how is it looking um, to our investors and potential investors? I mentioned um, before significant non-cash activities. So if it doesn't affect cash, we do not report it in the statement of cash flow. Uh, rather, it would be on a small note at the bottom. And um, there's ever ending examples of this, but there might be a way that um, shares are issued to purchase assets. You can also have debt and say, um, hey, we can't pay your debt, or hey, um, our company's doing really well. Instead of debt, would you like uh, some shares? Would you like equity? So if both parties agree, then that is a way um, to reduce liabilities or purchase those assets. Again, um, there might be something in the debt that you already issued that allows the debt to be converted into equity. Uh, so if that were to happen, um, and as an aside, and you'll learn about this more in later accounting classes, um, that can be at the debt or or the debt ease discretion, just depending on if it's convertible uh, debt or I forgot the other term off the top of my head, but it will just depend on what the terms are when the debt um, was issued and purchased by the um, by the debt or. And so if the either person elects to have that be converted in the period, then um, we would note that as our significant non-cash activities, but we would not um, need to put that on the face of operating, investing, or financing activities. All right, so some definitions. Um, cash is, is cash, like cash is cash, cash is your dollar dollar bills, but it is also, we call it CCE, um, so cash and cash equivalents. <clears throat> Excuse me, one second. So this includes um, things that are readily available to be converted into cash. And so this might be your, oh gosh, um, your short-term liquid investments that are going to be due, like your, they call them like T-bills, um, that are due within three months. Those would be uh, for cash, cash equivalent. Um, an operating line of credit. So you might have a negative cash position at the beginning or end of the year, and that's because uh, cash or cash equivalents includes your operating lines of credit. So it's everything that is cash or equivalent to cash, any short-term, highly liquid items. Um, I would include um, likely Bitcoin in this, unless your company had a long-term Bitcoin play or was like um, a Bitcoin uh, you know, operator. Anything that is highly liquid, uh, highly liquid, um, uh, it does say insignificant risk. So I guess that is just how do you, how does your business um, classify? So lots of gray area within uh, this item, but uh, it's very interesting um, because it is like what can be converted to cash within a very short period of time. All right, and then um, we're breaking down our sources of cash, sources slash uses of cash. We call it source if it's positive, use if it's negative, um, but effectively we have operating. So what happens in our day-to-day -day operations, remember operations are items that last generally uh, less than a year. It is the day-to-day -day activities of your company. It is your you know, accounts payable, accounts receivable. It is your sales. It is your cost of goods sold. These are our operating activities. Then we have our investing activities. These are typically start with our um, long-term assets on our financial statements. Then we have financing activities. These are typically our um, long-term liabilities as well as our equity items on our balance sheet. And don't worry, we'll be going over this in more detail very shortly.
All right. So operating activities. These are items uh, that if you look at our financial statements and look at our income statement and balance sheet, I want you to start parsing out which goes where because effectively what we're doing is taking our balance sheet and our income statement and we're putting sections to either operating, financing, or investing activities. So we have our revenues and expenses. Those are operations. So those will be going to our operating activities. And then um, we will be netting out um, our impacts to non-cash. This is a very, uh, how do I say it? This is a very, it could look like a tricky statement because you said, wait a minute, I thought it was um, cash. But effectively, we have two ways, and I'll be talking about this in a little bit, to create our statement of cash flows. One is the direct and one is the indirect. And the indirect is effectively, um, oops, sorry, one second. Um, our indirect is looking at all of the, is looking at revenue, net income. So net income, which is really a non-cash item. And then it's taking, takes net income and then it removes all of the non-cash items. And it's basically saying, cool, if you start off with net income, remove all the non-cash items, what are left are the cash items. And that's called indirect. And it's funny because when I first heard that as a student, I was like, oh, that sounds complicated. But it's actually the easier version to create. Um, whereas in the direct is adding in all the changes, um, pardon me, all the cash inflows and cash outflows. And why that is kind of a pain in the butt is because people get revenues in both cash and non-cash and expenses, cash and non-cash. And it's just like, blah, like you have to like basically be receipt collecting and adding. So both of these are ways in which we can um, present our, um, our operating activities section of our cash flow statement. Um, but either way, whether you do it direct or indirect, you'll still get the same number. All right, let's do a question first, and then, um, don't worry, this will start coming together as we continue with the chapter. Question time. Which of the following is not an operating activity for a company? Would it be a payment of accounts payable, purchase of a trading investment, payment of a bank loan, or collection of accounts receivable? If you said payment of a bank loan, you would be correct. So if it is a trading investment that is an operating activity, accounts payable, operating, you know, it's less than a year. These are the short term, you know, borrowings and then we'll pay them back. Um, and then collection of accounts receivable, again, operating activities. So um, payment of a bank loan is not an operating activity. All right, let's talk about investing activities. Um, investing activities include the purchase and disposal of long-term investments and long-lived assets. So this is your section of the balance sheet that is really long-term assets. This um, includes lending money and collecting loans, sure. So if you have a long-term note payable, um, this would be in there as well. Uh, so these are those long-term investments, property, plan, equipment, um, really just that section of your assets that is long-term in nature. All right, so we have land that is purchased through the issuance of common shares, um, and it should be disclosed on the statement of cash flows as a, a or an, so land purchase to the issuance of common shares. Is it going to be an operating activity, a financing activity, an investing activity, or non-cash investing and financing activity? So if you think about this in terms of debits and credits, this is a debit to land, a credit to common shares, no cash in that journal entry. Therefore, this would be a non-cash investing in financing activity, and we should note it on a note, because it's likely significant, on our statement of cash flows. 
All right, next high level um, item, our financing activities. This is our long-term liabilities and our equity statement of our cash flows. This is how are we effectively, how are we financing hopefully just our investing activities because we don't want to be financing to um, pay for operations, right? We want operations to be generating cash flows because that means that we're, we're doing good, we're sustaining ourselves um, off of our purpose of being in business. So um, this is uh, issuing debt, repaying amounts borrowed, um, selling or so issuing common and preferred shares, paying dividends. It could be repurchasing. Oh, I don't know why this is doing this. Ah. Uh, it could be uh, repurchasing of common and preferred shares, as we saw in the last chapter. And uh, this is like, how are we how are we generating cash to invest? All right, question time. Dividends declared always represent a cash payment in the period. True or false? False. Uh, only cash dividends declared and paid, only cash dividends declared and paid would represent a change of cash in the period. So even if they are cash dividends declared, they would have to be paid in order to represent um, a cash outflow uh, for investing um, pardon me, for financing in the period. Um, also, a little hint for true and false. Be very weary um, when things say always um, because there's typically an exception and part of understanding accounting is knowing, okay, in general, this is what's happening, um, but where are those details? Where are those exceptions lying? All right, a couple more questions. How would the following transaction be reported on the statement of cash flow? Uh, so have a read, pause the video, and come back, and we will talk about this. All right, so a company acquired a piece of equipment by issuing common shares for part of the cost and obtaining a bank loan for the remainder. So let's take a peek. Well, we got our debit for equipment, so we know that the equipment is coming in. And then we know that we have common shares that are being issued. We don't know how much the equipment is. And we don't know how much common shares, but we know in general um, bank loan payable. And so this would be our setup. And so how would this be reported on the statement of cash flow? This would be disclosed in the notes. So it's just as important to know what is going to be um, included in the operating financing investing sections and how much is going to be or and what needs to be disclosed in the notes all right so um here is our last activity for uh this video i'm going to pause the video and when i come back we are going to say whether each one of these items are um operating for o investing i or financing f okay we'll talk soon all right welcome back so we have repayments of long-term debt. Uh, these are going to be financing. And that is because it's long-term debt. It is, um, you know, the cash that we use to um, purchase our investments or generate. It's also, um, if we used it to generate, we also have to reflect um, the repayments of, so in or out financing for long-term debt. Decrease in inventories. Well, inventory is a current asset. Um, inventories is how we use, um, you know, to essentially generate money for operations. So this is going to be an operating cash flow. All right, this one is really super tricky, people. Depreciation of property, plant, and equipment. So while property, plant, and equipment are a long-term um, asset, so non-current asset, the depreciation is an expense and our, um, our expense goes to the income statement and it represents, you know, how much of this PP&E did we use this year to generate cash flows. And for that reason, depreciation of property, plants, and equipment is in fact an operating classification. So if you said operating, I, like, you are smarter than first year Samantha. 
because I would have been like, no, all about here. And if you said PP&E, uh, you are in good company. We are both wrong. We will learn from our mistakes and we will realize, oh, right, depreciation. That's uh, an expense. And in default, um, revenues and expenses, that's what happened this year and that it represents operating because operating is this year. All right. Um, payments for purchase of property, plant, and equipment. This is going to be classic I, classic investing. So we are investing in our future because we want to invest in PP&E such that we generate cash flows for operations in the future. All right, dividends paid to shareholders. This is going to be financing. Um, thank you, shareholders, for investing in us. And here is a portion of how awesome um, our company is growing and we would like to reflect it with a thank you in the form of dividends financing. Decrease in provisions, uh, that's a current liability and that because it is a current liability is going to be an operating item. Proceeds from long-term debt, all right, so we issued some debt that is going to be financing. Amortization of intangible assets. Well, this is very similar to depreciation of property, plants, and equipment. Um, amortization of intangible assets. Um, remember, intangible assets are the things that we can't knock, quote, quote. Um, they're things like if we were to purchase a customer list from a dentist. So if it had a useful life, um, we amortize it over its useful life. And so that would represent one year's worth of um, amortization on our income statement, which means it is O for operating. All right, so let's go back to our slides for one last slide. So we end where we began, and the purpose of this chapter was to do a high level overview of what types of things are gonna go into our statement of cash flow. We get to look at our operating activities using either the direct or the indirect method. Indirect starts off with net income and adds, adds and subtracts back all the non-cash items so that what you're left with is cash. And uh, there's also the direct method, which we just is essentially like the investing or financing. What's the cash? You know, what are the net cash receipts? What are the net cash um, outflows for every single flipping item? It's really, it's, it's, it's a lot. Okay, um, so the, a lot meaning the direct, uh, the direct method. The indirect method is really, um, as I think you will see in the next video, going to be more preferred. Uh, the investing activities. Uh, so what is our, uh, where are we investing? And it did we, you know, maybe sell a tractor and get some cash proceeds back. Um, inflows and outflows here. Financing activities, um, how are we financing our investments? Um, you know, is it debt, is it equity? Um, have we made any payments back or issued any, um, declared any dividends, uh, declared and paid any dividends for the period? Add up all those changes, you know, hopefully positive, likely negative, hopefully probably positive. Um, and then we have our net changes in cash flow add it to our opening cash balance, and then we get our ending cash. And when this balances, we celebrate. Of course, we note any significant non-cash investing items because we want to be transparent to our, um, our users of the financial statements. All right, so here's the good news. What is examinable? You need to know um, what elements go in to each category, like our little mini questions throughout this uh, video. Uh, you also need to know how this works. Uh, in general, you need to know what it means. So if you have a uh, negative number here, is, you know, what does that mean? Um, you need to be able to point out you know, sources of health or non-health for a company. You do not need to be able to prepare a cash flow statement yourself. So rather, you need to understand how it works. You need to understand, uh, communicate you know, risks and benefits um, of this company. You do not need to be able to create the cash flow statement at this point in your accounting career. That um, you know, may come up in future courses. All right, thank you so much for your attention. I will see you in the next video.